The concept of the 11th hour often invokes a sense of urgency and impending change, particularly in the context of biblical references and modern interpretations. This notion is rooted in the idea that there is a critical point in time when significant decisions or actions must be taken, often with far-reaching consequences. The 11th hour is used to describe the late or final moments before a significant event or judgment. For example, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 6, Jesus tells a parable regarding the 11th hour. In contemporary discussions, the 11th hour usually means a significant time when we need to make big decisions, especially about big issues. It suggests that while time is running short, there is still a crucial window of opportunity for change and redemption. This mirrors the biblical message of hope and redemption, as seen in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, which states, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This idea encourages individuals and communities to recognize the urgency of the moment while also understanding that there is still time for positive action and transformation. Jesus on the End Times In Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14, Jesus talks with his disciples about future events, including the signs that will happen before the end of the world. This discussion takes place on the Mount of Olives, just outside Jerusalem. Jesus begins by warning the disciples not to be deceived by people claiming to be the Messiah, saying, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 5. He tells them that there will be wars, rumors of wars, and various natural disasters like earthquakes and famines, but these are just the beginning of sorrows. He also mentions that they will face persecution and be hated because of their faith in Him. Jesus warns that many will turn away from their faith, betray, and hate each other. False prophets will appear and deceive many people. Despite these challenges, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Jesus emphasizes that those who stand firm to the end will be saved. In this case, Jesus was predicting various difficulties and disasters that would occur before the end times. He warns of deception, conflicts, natural disasters, persecution of believers, and the rise of false prophets. However, in the midst of all these challenges, the good news of Jesus will spread throughout the world. The key message is one of endurance and faithfulness, with a promise of salvation for those who remain steadfast in the faith. Nation will rise against nation, and the kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 through 8. Revelation of the End Times In Revelation chapter 21, the Bible describes a vision of a new, perfect world that God creates after the end of times. This chapter is filled with hope and promises of a better future for those who believe in God. It starts with the old heaven and earth disappearing and God creating a new heaven and a new earth. The sea, often a symbol of chaos in the Bible, is also gone. The holy city, the New Jerusalem, comes down from heaven. It's described as a beautiful, shining city, prepared like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. God will live among the people. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Revelation 21, verse 4. This shows a future without suffering, where God heals all pain. God then declares, I am making everything new. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. This is a promise of complete renewal, not just fixing what's broken, but creating something totally new and perfect. God promises that those who are victorious will inherit this new world, but warns that the cowardly, unbelieving, and sinful will not be part of it. The city is described in detail, with walls made of precious stones, streets of gold, and gates of pearl. It doesn't need the sun or moon because God's glory gives it light, and the nations will walk by this light. The gates of the city are always open, and the glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it, but nothing impure will enter it. 
This chapter in Revelation paints a picture of a future where God restores everything and lives among His people in a world free of pain, suffering, and death. It's a vision of hope and a promise of God's ultimate triumph over evil and sorrow. Daniel on the End Times In the Old Testament, the book of Daniel also contains apocalyptic visions. Daniel 12 speaks of a time of great distress, unparalleled in history, followed by deliverance for those whose names are written in the book, a metaphor for being chosen or saved. In Daniel 12, the final chapter of the book of Daniel in the Bible, several significant events and prophecies are described. The chapter talks about an end-time resurrection, where some who have died will wake up to everlasting life, while others to shame and everlasting contempt. This reflects the belief in a final judgment and the eternal fate of souls. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will be like the stars forever. In contrast, the wicked will not understand, but the wise will understand. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. This part also talks about a prediction for when the end times will happen. It says that 1,290 days after daily sacrifice is abolished, an abomination that causes desolation is set up, these end times will start. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches 1,335 days. Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 through 12. The chapter then ends with an angel instructing Daniel to close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Daniel is then told that he will rest, and then at the end of days, he will rise to receive his allotted inheritance. This passage suggests that despite the trials and tribulations of the end times, there is a promise of salvation and hope for the faithful. These passages, with their rich symbolic language, are open to various interpretations. They often speak to the dual themes of destruction and renewal, judgment and salvation, and the eternal struggle between good and evil. In simple terms, they remind believers of the importance of faith, perseverance, and hope in the face of life's challenges and the promise of a new beginning. Signs of the Eleventh Hour The Bible mentions an increase in natural disasters as a sign of the end times. In Luke chapter 21, verse 11, it states, There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. This suggests an escalation in the frequency and intensity of natural phenomena like earthquakes and famines. A decline in moral values is another sign. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5, through 5, the Bible describes the moral state of people in the last days as lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This passage reflects a decline in societal values and ethics. The Bible also talks about an increase in conflicts. Matthew chapter 24 verses 6 through 7 says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. This implies a world increasingly embroiled in conflicts and tensions. The emergence of false prophets and messiahs is another significant sign. Matthew chapter 24 verse 24 warns, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This indicates that deception and false teachings will be widespread. Interestingly, the Bible also mentions the spread of the gospel worldwide as a sign of the end times. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. This suggests that the message of Christianity will reach every corner of the world before the end times. Judgment the concept of judgment is a common theme in the Bible. It's also about being responsible for our actions, the chance to be saved or forgiven, and fairness. This theme mixes together how we behave with how God watches over everything. 
The Bible portrays the final judgment as a decisive moment when God evaluates every person's actions and intentions. This judgment is depicted in various books, but perhaps mostly in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20 verses 12 through 13 says, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. This passage suggests that everyone, regardless of their status in life, will face judgment. The Bible emphasizes the importance of personal accountability. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. This means that people are accountable for what they do and will face the results of their actions. It reminds us that what we do and decide is important, not just now, but also when it comes to being judged forever. Despite the warnings of judgment, the Bible also offers a message of hope and redemption. This is mostly clearly seen in Jesus Christ as a Savior who redeems humanity from its sins. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 explains this. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. This suggests that redemption and salvation are available to those who believe and follow the teachings of Jesus. The concept of divine justice is essential to the idea of judgment in the Bible. It reflects a balance between God's mercy and His role as a just judge. Psalms chapter 9, verses 7 through 8 says, But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established His throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. This highlights the belief in a fair and impartial judgment based on righteousness and truth. The Role of Faith and Hope The role of faith and hope in the eleventh hour delves into the critical aspects of faith and hope in the context of end times. When thinking about the end times, Faith is usually seen as a strong and unchanging belief, even when things are uncertain and difficult. It's about holding on to the conviction that, despite the apparent chaos and tribulations, a higher purpose or plan is at work. This concept is echoed in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This sentence means that faith is about believing in things we can't see, not just the things we can. It suggests that having faith means trusting in a higher plan or purpose, even when life gets tough. Hope, especially when times are tough or near the end, is like a light that helps people find their way through dark and unsure times. It's a quality that makes people think positively about the future and helps them see past the current troubles. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Romans chapter 8, verses 24 through 25. This part means that hope is closely connected to having faith. It's about looking forward to something good happening and waiting for it patiently, even if you can't see it happening right away. Spiritual preparedness. Spiritual preparedness in the context of end times is about nurturing one's faith and hope. It involves regular spiritual practices like prayer, meditation, and studying the Bible to strengthen one's relationship with God. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. This reminds us to be constantly prepared, as the exact time of these end times is unknown. Therefore, Faith and hope play important roles in the eleventh hour by offering spiritual resilience and a perspective that looks beyond immediate circumstances. They remind believers of the bigger picture and the divine promise, encouraging a state of readiness and spiritual alertness. These virtues act as anchors, providing stability and strength in times of uncertainty and change. The concept of the eleventh hour is largely influenced by a parable told by Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew and carries significant weight in the study of the end times. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 1-16, through 16, Jesus tells a story known as the parable of the workers in the vineyard. In this narrative, the landowner needed workers for his vineyard, so he went out early in the morning to hire some. He agreed to pay them a denarius, a day's wage, and sent them to his vineyard. At about nine in the morning, 
He saw others standing idle in the marketplace and told them to go work in his vineyard, promising to pay them what was right. He did the same at noon and three in the afternoon. Finally, he went out about five in the afternoon and found others standing around. He asked them why they were standing idle all day, and they said no one had hired them. So he sent them to work in his vineyard too. When it got dark, the owner of the vineyard told his manager to bring the workers and pay them, beginning with those hired last and ending with those hired first. The workers hired last came, and each received a denarius. So when the first ones hired came, they expected to receive more, but they also received a denarius. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying that they had borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day, but were paid the same as those who worked only an hour. The landowner answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Matthew chapter 20, verses 13 through 15. Jesus concludes the story by saying, So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. This parable teaches about the kingdom of heaven and God's grace, showing that God's generosity is not based on our ideas of fairness or the amount of work we do, but on His own grace and mercy. The eleventh hour covers important themes of grace, being saved, the end of the world, and how limitless God's mercy is. The fact that people can understand these themes in many different ways shows just how deep and complex these discussions can be. Part 3. Conclusion The day is coming. The eleventh hour serves as a powerful reminder of the unpredictability and the significance of future events, especially as understood through a biblical lens. This idea really highlights the fact that even though we try to guess and get ready for what might happen in the future, we can't actually know for sure when and how these things will happen. It's like how the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, that these events are as unpredictable as a thief coming in the night. You know it might happen, but you don't know when. The metaphor of the eleventh hour symbolizes a critical, almost last moment phase, suggesting that while we may sense the significant changes or events, their exact unfolding is beyond our precise prediction or control. This idea makes us think deeply and get ready, telling us it's important to live, to be alert, and be prepared. It's because the final time when everything will be judged is sure to come, but we don't know when. This is just like what Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 in the Bible says, No one knows when that day or time will be, nor the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but only the Father. Part 4. Prayer Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts open and minds attentive, thinking about the message of the eleventh hour, the time that reminds us of the urgency and importance of each moment we have. Lord, guide us to use our time wisely and to make choices that reflect your love and goodness in our lives. Help us to be mindful of the preciousness of each day and to live in a way that honors the time you have given us. We ask for your strength and guidance as we face the challenges and opportunities of our days. May we be alert to the needs of those around us, showing kindness and compassion in our actions. Lord, help us to remember that every hour is a gift from you, and may we use these hours to spread your love, seek your wisdom, and walk in your ways. As we think about the approaching 11th hour, let us be reminded of the hope and promise you offer. May we find comfort in your presence, knowing that you are with us always, guiding us toward a future filled with your grace and peace. Bless us, Lord, as we strive to make each day 